Guys, I'm really pleased to welcome back to the podcast um, our friend John Gruder, is um, movie director, and uh, we're go- we want to talk about um, John's film that is called Sabina. It is a magnificent film. Debbie and I found it very powerful, deeply moving, and it's up on my locals channel this weekend. In fact, now you can check it out and uh, go to dinesh.locals.com. You'll, you'll actually have two options. You can just purchase the film and uh, stream it, watch it, or you can subscribe to my local channel, become an annual subscriber. You'll get the film along with a whole bunch of other films there for free. John, welcome to the podcast. Um, of course, we have one of your films already up in my local channel, The Frontier Boys. And if I scroll down into the comments, people just love that film. It's a very different kind of a film. It's it's basketball. It's high school. Uh, it's located differently than Sabina. But I just wanted to thank you for letting for working out a deal where we could have these films available to people. Uh, to me, it's such a refreshing contrast from just you know surfing Netflix and one horrible choice after another and Debbie and I could not be more excited about Sabina so we'll we'll get to Sabina in a moment but you just got back from Nepal doing some film scouting well first of all what was it like and what are you scouting for well yeah thank you Dinesh it's it's a uh, always a great pleasure to speak with you and and I I'm just honored that our our films are going up on your channel um I, <clears throat> I really love your audience. I'm one of them. I'm part of them. And uh, I, I hope they enjoy the Frontier Boys and Sabina. Yeah, my, <clears throat> excuse me. My wife and I were in Nepal uh, in the mountains, uh, way up in the Himalayas, in the Annapurnas, uh, in a very remote little village, scouting for some projects that we'll be shooting in January. I'd never been to Nepal before. And, the, and we, you know, we, we took a, a helicopter from Kathmandu, up into this mountain village about an hour and a half and flew right past the most incredible mountain range I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen the Dolomites in Italy. I've seen the Alps in Switzerland, the Rockies, but <clears throat> my goodness, the Himalayas are amazing. And the people are very wonderful there. There's a, there's a, a hospitality gene that they're born with, that they treat guests with great uh, dignity and honor. So it was wonderful. Um, we'll be shooting a couple of short films in January um, that talk about uh, the, the world of the, the Buddhist monk. And uh, the, the boys in Buddhism are sent to the monasteries at about age four or five, and then they spend their lives there. And for some of them, um, that can feel uh, a bit oppressive. And so we're telling the story of a young boy who actually uh, disrobes, they call it, which is he leaves the Buddhist monastery and ends up um, – finding himself in a, in a very vibrant Christian church. A true story, but it was really a fascinating trip to, to learn about that world. So that's Well, John, I mean, it, it sounds amazing, to be honest. And I think one of the wonderful things that you do in your work is you're able to take us to different places and times and just sort of parachute us in there. And, and let's talk about Sabina, because there's been a lot of films about the Nazis and the Jews and the concentration camps and, of course, World War II. What to me is interesting is that Sabina is set in Romania. And so you begin to see a country that evidently was at different times of the war on both sides. Uh, it, right. it, it kind of went into the Nazi camp for a while and toward the end of the war went the other way. And... Um, and you create a, uh, I think, a, a wonderful opening scene where you've got these Nazis who were once, as you, this is your language, the hunters who now become the hunted. The Soviets are after them. They're running away from the Soviets. Uh, talk a little bit about that sort of stunning opening scene, which which sets forth the whole storyline of Sabina. Why would a woman, Sabina, who is uh, of Jewish origin, uh, but now a Christian, want to help Nazis to escape yeah. from the Russians. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, we, I have a friend that always asks me, um, what is the one question that your movie is trying to answer? You know, he's another writer, and, and he says, you've got to boil it down to that. You've got to have a question that must be answered. And, and the question in this movie, you just put your finger right on it, is why would a Jewish woman help 
a, a set of Nazi soldiers? Like that is a foundationally deep question. And the question gets even more complicated as the movie unravels when you realize she has every reason in the world to do the complete opposite, to rather than help the Nazis, to take vengeance on them. They had taken an amazing uh, bite out of her life and her culture's life. The horror of being occupied by the Nazis and the brutality with which they treated the Jewish populations, you know, all over Western and Eastern Europe is, is, is like you say, well documented. So this isn't necessarily a story about uh, World War II or about the Holocaust in particular. It's a character study, a study of a woman who is in the middle of that, that world. And so the movie opens <clears throat> with these three Germans running uh, through the streets of Bucharest trying to evade a, a, a Russian patrol group. And what's honest, or what's, what's, what's odd is that the Russian patrols <laughs> in this case, are not that terribly motivated. It's not really a sort of a life and death, you know, heavy music. They're running and they're being shot at. But this particular Russian patrol is is drinking booze and chasing women and kind of in town. And they're, they'll take a few pot shots and run, but it's not a, it's not sort of the heavy, heavy, intense. They, the guy literally finishes his vodka bottle and throws it at the Germans. So they're evading, uh, but it's a strange situation. Like you said, I think it's a little bit different than than – Saving Private Ryan or other great uh, World War II movies. And what happens is that these Germans are left over. They're the last of the Germans in town because as, exactly as you said, Romania switched sides halfway through World War II. I, that, I did not know this fact before I started working on this screenplay. They were aligned with the Russians. I'm sorry, they were aligned with the Nazis. And halfway through, they, they wanted they switched sides and joined the Allies which might have been okay had the Americans been their, their closest ally. But the war, the war ended, and then, of course, they got the communists and a million uh, communists. And, and our, our other film, Tortured for Christ, deals with that era. But let's take, You know what, John? Let's take a pause. When we come back, I want to push further into the plot of this film because it sets up the, the I think, explosive and very moving climax. We'll be right back. 